Hi, this is Alana from Praying Christian Women. I am here with Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. I'm really Good. excited that we're here. Yes, this is the Praying Christian Women Online Conference of 2021. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. And just so you know, we wanted to just hop on and introduce ourselves and let you know a little bit about what to expect with this conference, because frankly, this is our first conference like this, and it maybe it's your first conference like this, and you're just kind of wondering what to expect. Um, so we have 23 speakers, Alana and myself included. Um, there are do we a total count as one or do we count as two? Because we kind of, we kind of go together in a lot of things. We do. We do <laughs> share some parts of our brains I think are <laughs> somewhat connected in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> we count as one a piece. So we count as two individuals in my that count works. of 23 speakers. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, but yeah, and there are 22 sessions, including this welcome and yeah, there's just going to be so much involved. I mean, you're just going to have so much. It's going to be just like a, a fire hose of prayer instruction and teaching mm -hmm. and wisdom. I can't wait. So yeah. So the idea of an online prayer conference that lasts three days might be slightly confusing. So if you're confused about the format or even just curious, this isn't something where you show up at nine in the morning and we're going to be praying until like nine in the evening or anything like that. Basically, we want to offer you all of the encouragement and inspiration to help you grow in your prayer life. So that's going to come from some interview type styles where we can talk to just real experts in the fields of prayer and Christian living and Bible motivation and encouragement. And some of it's going to be some of these experts just delivering to you straight from their heart some of the encouragement that they want to offer you today. Yeah, and I would really recommend looking ahead of time as you see, as you go down, you don't have to attend every session. If you see one that really looks appealing to you or many of them do, you know, pick and choose which ones you would like to show up to. We have a schedule each day um, and on, the, on the page for that conference day. And I would really recommend looking a few of our speakers, including myself for one of one of the talks, um, have downloadable worksheets so that you can print them out if you want, or, you know, you can pick and choose. I would recommend having a journal. I know some of the sessions will ask for you to do some reflection and some writing down of things, not to mention taking notes would probably be good, especially since these sessions are uh, they're going to be live each one for 24 hours after they first air. And that may or may not be enough time for you. You might want to take good notes so you can go back and reflect. Or if you really want to have these forever and ever, you can get an all access pass, which you probably know about because if you signed up, it prompted you if you wanted this all access pass. But what that is, is it's an opportunity for you to get lifetime access to the all of the sessions um, you will also get a bonus session that Alana and I will be bringing to you um, that's kind of a step-by-step -step praying through your home, and you'll be able to attend a live Zoom retreat with us. So those are some bonuses that you'll get along with it, um, and I think this would be perfect if you want to revisit the sessions kind of with a less hurried agenda if you want to maybe grab a few friends this was the idea that excited me was getting a few friends together or family members and having like a little mini retreat maybe over a weekend or something there are a mm -hmm. lot of things that you can do with having this recorded like all of these sessions recorded and and with lifetime access so exactly exactly yeah we are offering you so much in these next three days and for some people it's going to be uh, exactly what you need to give that spark and vitality back to your prayer life. For some people, it might feel like drinking from a fire hose, <laughs> which is why we wanted to offer the all access pass so that you could take your time. You could go back and revisit things. You don't need to feel like, you know, maybe you're listening to even like Jamie and me right now, and you're taking the kids to school or something, and you want a format that's less hurried and harried. <laughs> That's what the all access pass would be for. But regardless, we are so glad that you're here. If you haven't met us yet, Jamie and I are friends from, let's see, our our oldest, it's we've been friends for about a decade now. Yeah. I would oh guess. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. We met in Anchorage where we were both living at the time. We are both Alaskan transplants who love living out here. 
Sadly, we don't uh, live in the same town anymore, but we have maintained our friendship and have been co-hosts of the Praying Christian Women podcast, which started, I believe, in summer of 2018. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I was trying to figure that out. So yeah, summer of 2018. So we're coming up on three years. Yeah. That's crazy. So if you also wanted, um, you know, a format to take with you on the go, we'd love for you to check out the Praying Christian Women podcast if you aren't familiar with that yet. And what we want to do right now, of course, we want to welcome you. We wanted to give you a feel for how this is all laid out, how it's going to work. I know for me, in addition to sharing the encouragement and inspiration that all these speakers have on their hearts to bring you, we really wanted to foster a sense of community as well. So Jamie, do you want to explain kind of how the chat works? And maybe we can even ask people a just for fun question like we do on the podcast. Oh, that's a great idea. So um, I even have one prepared, I think. Oh, no, smart. I don't. Never mind. I don't. Okay. You explain chat. I'll come up with it just for fun. Good. That sounds good. So the way the chat works is we're using chat tango and you don't even need to be signed up. I realize this. I've never used it before until this. So what you'll do is you're probably watching us now um, in the embedded video on the website that we, the web page that we gave you in the email. Um, so right next to that, um, that, that box is a chat box and you can type any you can type in a name at the very bottom of that it'll say set name at the very bottom of that little pink box um, next to our video and you can click that and you can set either you can sign up or sign in to chat tango or you can just set a temporary name and just start chatting immediately which is really easy so if you just yeah. wanted to get on and type in a name a username that you want to use then do it, go for it. And someone will be moderating all of our sessions. Some of them you will actually get the, the speaker will be part of the moderation. In some of them you will get Alana or myself or one of our ministry partners, Sherry or someone else. But um, but we will have someone there to kind of answer questions that you have. And but really it's there for you to interact with each other mm-hmm. and to, you know, just share experiences and thoughts and prayer requests and prayers for each other. Um, or just comments and encouragement for the speaker as well, because our speakers Mm -hmm. are all amazing women. But I know that each one of them would really be blessed if you let them know how their talk impacted you and, you know, for them to just have confirmation that God has called them to this conference for specific reasons and to reach women. Absolutely. So one thing that we love to do, we start many of our podcast episodes with a just for fun question. So let's do that in the chat. How about just for fun? Why don't you tell us who is most responsible for inspiring your prayer life? So this could be more like a teacher or mentor, or it could be more like a prayer partner or friend. Jamie and I have been, like I said, friends for a really long time. We were prayer partners years before the idea of doing a podcast together even dropped on our radar. We've we've been prayer partners since before either of us knew what a podcast was. (laughs) That's right. That's right. We really have. (laughs) That's how old our friendship is. And I'm just, I'm so blessed. So my answer right off the top is I know I'm blessed and inspired by you. I love how quickly you are to offer prayers for people. Sometimes I'll tell Jamie that I'm having a bad day and she'll call me right then and say, well, let's pray about it. And if we can't talk on the phone, she will actually type out a prayer in text, which, you know, you got to have some pretty impressive thumb power (laughs) to pull that off. Uh, And that has so much inspired me in my prayer life. And I'm just so thankful for my friendship with you. And really, if it it hadn't been for that friendship base, none of this would have happened. We wouldn't have a prayer podcast. We wouldn't be doing an online prayer retreat for all these women who are here. Absolutely. And yes, you're, you're number one on my list too, Alana, and just the, the journey that we have been through both our friendship, our prayer partnership and the podcast adventure and, and mm-hmm. what that's done have all just really been inspirational and, and really shaped my prayer life in ways that 
no one else and nothing else has. Yeah. Um, and I have some other mentors along the way, which is kind of fun to look back and think of, you know, the different steps leading up to praying Christian women and mm -hmm. the ways that I've learned about prayer. And yeah, it's just kind of cool. So yeah, let us it's know. a fun, fun journey. Yep. So if you have a hard time picking one, you can, you know, name a few different ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we want to offer you is just a sort of part of our welcome session is a little bit of discussion of what it means to be a praying Christian women. What do we mean by that? It, I don't, I think the name of our podcast fell upon us kind of easily because we're like, well, we want it to be for women and we want it to be about prayer and we want it to be Christian prayer. And so, I mean, praying Christian women is probably the most obvious answer that you'll get to, uh, to check off all those boxes. But I feel like there's a lot of potential baggage that can surround even the the term, you know, I'm a I'm a praying woman, I am a praying Christian. So we just want to unpack some of the baggage that might be there. And especially if you're new to kind of the way that Jamie and I teach about prayer and approach prayer, we just want to make sure that we're all coming at this from the right place. The last thing that we want is for anybody listening to feel like there's a rubric. And there are some people who have met the rubric of what it means to be a praying Christian woman. And then there's all these other people who are still tr struggling to figure out what the rubric is. There's no rubric. We are all invited to this amazing relationship with God. And the means that we have to connect with him is through prayer, which is such a blessing. But so many of us have just guilt surrounding our prayer lives. And my prayer life doesn't look like my pastor's prayer life. My prayer life doesn't look like my Sunday school teacher's prayer life. And so we feel ashamed and guilty. And then nobody wants to feel ashamed and guilty. So we just stop trying, right? It's like, I don't want to go to the gym because I don't look like all these other women at the gym. And so I'm not going to go to the gym, which means I'm never going to change. <laughs> you know, I feel like prayer kind of comes with some baggage like that, but we just want to spend a little bit of time unpacking. I agree. And I feel like kind of the starting point for that is this idea of nobody has a perfect prayer life. And then on the Except other hand, you and me, because I mean, we have a, we have a, a podcast about prayer. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Just I, kidding. I know. Well, I, I joke around sometimes or even very, you know, humbly confess that there are many weeks that I spend way more time talking about prayer than I spend mm -hmm. actually praying. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody has a perfect prayer life. Amen. And yet everybody has a perfect prayer life because your prayer life, your what I what I, I don't mean that we shouldn't aspire to more or strive to grow, but mm -hmm. we all have a unique connection with God. And so no one has a perfect prayer life. So, so don't feel like somehow you are less than other women that you see these women that you're going to see speaking are incredible. Not one of them has a perfect prayer life and they'll admit that freely. In fact, many of them, we ask, what is your biggest prayer struggle? And, and everyone has prayer struggles. Um, but on the other hand, you have the perfect prayer life that God has designed for you. God, God has designed you uniquely. Your relationship with God is not like anyone else's. So your prayer life shouldn't and doesn't have to and, and really shouldn't look like everybody mm -hmm. else's or anyone else's. So exactly. Jamie and I pray very differently from each other. You know, one of Jamie's gifts is the gift of encouraging others through prayer. You know, that's why her thumbs can type out a whole prayer in text and send it to somebody. And I know she, she does that even for people she hasn't met. You know, somebody will email into the show and she'll just type back a prayer for them. That's not my prayer style. And, and you know, there are things that I do in my prayer life that don't look like Jamie's prayer life. And so we, we love unpacking all of the thoughts of what your prayer life should look like. And so, yeah, if you're not a perfect prayer, this is, this is where you're supposed to be. And another one, you know, we struggle with prayer. And just like Jamie said, the, the speakers that you're going to hear today struggle with prayer. And so we don't want to pretend like prayer struggles don't exist. I remember once being a little kid and my pastor stood from the pulpit. It's one of the only things I remember him saying. He said, here's the backstory, which I forget. And then his friends, he told his friend, I'll be praying for you. And his friend said, well, why would you do that? And my pastor said, because it's so easy. And that stuck with me for like 
two and a half decades that prayer was supposed to be easy. And the better of a Christian you were, the more naturally prayer would come to you. And nothing could be farther from the truth. Jamie and I have a passion for prayer. We have a passion to teach prayer, but we still struggle in our prayer lives. It's not like we wake up every single day and have three hours of uninterrupted quiet time with the Lord, right? So prayer struggles are real and we want to just encourage you. So how about, let's start this in chat too. Just what are some of the prayer struggles that you're facing right now? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, and it's funny because the number one, I will say unequivocally, unequivoc unequiv is that unequivocally, unequivocally, <laughs> it has a bull, not an bull. <laughs> okay. Unequivocally. In anyway, uh, the number one, you don't have enough time. I don't know. The number one struggle is uh -huh. that I hear that I hear when I'm interviewing people and asking what's your biggest prayer struggle is distractions. Ah, yep. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing. And I know I struggle with that a lot too. And we oh, talk sure. a lot about distractions in prayer, but I'll be interested to hear if that is your number one, give us your number two also. So we have some yeah. variety. <laughs> yeah. If distractions are number one, number two is I don't have time. Yes. Right. And, and we get it right. It's not going to work for most of us to set a timer for three hours and, yeah. and sit there doing nothing but praying. And, and God's not up there with the timer either. Right. And that's this kind of connotation that so many of us have, even if it's on a subconscious level, he's there checking his boxes. Well, Jamie, I see that you spent 45 minutes reading a magazine today, but only 42 minutes reading your Bible. God's, God's yeah. not, you know, he's not, I, I picture like a PE coach, you know, like checking off when you're doing the presidential uh, fitness challenge or something. Right. <laughs> this isn't a pass fail or anything like that. So yeah, a huge issue that women face is this idea of I don't have time to pray and we want to unpack that as well and one of our topics that Jamie and I will be presenting in another session is about kind of prayer and productivity and time management and how how do we not only squeeze time in for prayer but how do we allow prayer to be what sets our schedule and what allows us to live busy lives and to accomplish all of the things that God has put on our plates to accomplish. Right. And, and how to get to the place, you know, and I think this kind of like undergirds a lot of the action part of prayer is how do I get to a place where I truly, first of all, believe that prayer works, believe that yes. prayer is powerful. Because mm -hmm. if we look at it as just, you know, a task to check off exactly. our to-do list, there, there's no power in that. There's no drive. What's your motivation for doing it other than to check the box, right? right? If you really, what can we do to believe that prayer is powerful and that God's power is used and at work in us through prayer? And that's yeah. big. That's a big part of oh, the for puzzle. Sure. Not everybody's going to look at it this way, but I came to the conclusion, I don't know, 15 years ago, if my prayers aren't going to make an actual tangible difference in world history, I'm not going to bother spending energy. I'm going to do my thank you, God, for this food type prayers, and that's going to be it. And so I had to come to this place. I was actively praying through, you know, the, the globe and it felt exhausting. And like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this just to check off the box? Because if I am, that's not a good enough reason. Am I doing it to earn brownie points with God and make him love me more? No, because God can't love me more than he already does. And so I had to come to this conclusion. If the a passionate intercession that I am expending so much spiritual and mental energy on isn't going to have an actual tangible impact. It's not worth it. And so I had to come to realize, okay, that means that I need to believe without the shadow of a doubt that if I don't spend this energy and this time and this passion praying like I do, that the world's going to be a worse off place. <laughs> and if you look at it that way, that is incentive, right? The world needs our prayers. Our prayers do make a difference and not just in the God gives us a pat on the head kind of way. Our prayers make a difference in the actual outcome of world events, of world history. And that is, it's an inspiring gift and also a tremendous burden. It is. And that's our tagline, changing the world one prayer at a time, because we really do oh. believe that prayer changes things. And it's just exciting to me. And I don't get to this point of really 
recognizing this, you know, it, it takes slowing down and thinking about it sometimes to get back to this, but it's just, I, it's exciting to me that God chose to involve us. Like he didn't yeah. have to, he didn't mm -hmm. have to, and mm -hmm. he chose to involve us to allow us to partner with him in seeing his kingdom come and his will be done on earth 